stop right there don't hit the phones talking to sellers until you watch this video today i'm going to go through the exact script that i use to go from negative thirty thousand on my first flip to over three hundred thousand in net profit from flipping and wholesaling in 2022 this webinar is from a six-part series where i teach you this exact system that i use if you're interested on being on the next one go in the link in the description below to sign up check this video out So today we'll talk about essentially all of the info to gather before you go on this appointment with the seller. So the first things first, you get the lead. After you get the list, you call them and you get the leads. So at, once somebody raises their hand and says that they want to sell, then uh, you'll take them through the process of getting more information. Once you get more information from the seller, then uh, you can determine if you want to run numbers and go on the appointment to get the property under contract. We're going to go over the cold calling script. And basically there's four different pillars that you want to be able to get uh, in order to qualify if this is a good lead to go on an appointment with. And those four pillars are number one is timeline. Number two is property condition. Number three is asking price. And number four is motivation to sell. Your motivation to sell is the most important part of this conversation. And that's how you're going to be, be able to determine if it's a property you actually want to go on the appointment. Because the reality is, is if you're not qualifying these leads good enough, you're going to waste a lot of time. You're going to end up going on a ton of appointments that are pretty much useless for you. And you're kind of just wasting your time. Here is the cold calling script. And when you are going through this cold calling script, you, you don't want to sound so robotic. You want to sound like you're having a genuine conversation with the seller. Now you'll see that even though if you're by yourself and this year a one man show, I still reference somebody else. Even when I was starting out and I was making all these calls myself, I'm never the decision maker. You never want to let the seller know that you are the decision maker because then you lose all power. You never want to act like you know more than you do. You actually want to act like you don't really know much because at the end of the day, you want the seller on your side and that you're actually asking permission from somebody else to see what you can offer on this property. And you're not the one who holds all the decision-making power. So that's why when we go into this, we're like, great, I can't wait to tell her. The purpose of this call is to gather some information about the property so that she can prepare an offer. We usually don't formulate an offer until we get an okay from the homeowner, but the process is very simple. I just need a couple of minutes of your time to ask questions about the condition of the home. Is that okay? And so as we go through that, we're reminding them that, hey, we don't really know what we can offer on your property. I need to get some information first. Then I can go to the owner and see if this is a property that they want to buy. And you're asking them permission. Is that okay for me to take a couple minutes of your time? Some people are going to say no. Some people are going to say yes. Now, if they say no, then one thing you can say is, no problem at all. I probably caught you at a bad time. If you were me, when would be the best time to give you a call back? Making sure you put that in the beginning is like, if you were me, when would be a good time for me to call you back? That way they can put themselves in your shoes. So they say, is that okay? Yes. First thing you want to find out is a property condition. Great. Can you tell me a little bit about the property? Just some basics, like any updates or improvements that have been done in the last five years? And here is where you pause. You just let them say whatever they want to say. You let them blabber on about the roof. You let them blabber off about anything that they want about the property, because really you're just trying to build some rapport. And the way you build rapport is by letting them talk. It's not even saying anything. It's just asking more questions, continuing to be curious. Remember, you're not here to convince somebody to sell. You're here to see if it's a qualified opportunity or not. And once they continue talking about the property condition, you want to ask them, are there any major or minor repairs that need to be done? Like the roof, the heater. When's the last time that you changed out the roof? If it's been over 30 years, it's probably time to change out that roof. Uh, as far as the updates that have been done in the last five years, the reason why you ask that is because typically a kitchen and a bathroom is considered outdated once you're past that five-year mark. So if you think about like what has been in for the last five years, it's been like white shaker cabinets, white cabinets with either silver or black hardware. But if you think about past that, that time frame, 
typically you're in that brown cabinet range. So you're wanting to know and understand what needs to be done to, to make the property modern to, to today's standards. That way, you know, if there's an opportunity there to add some value. So after you go through the property condition, you continue on and try to get information about pretty much all the different systems. If you're not in uh, HVAC, kitchen, bathrooms, roof, electrical, plumbing, then moving on. Great. That sounds really good. If we presented you an all cash offer that you like, when would you be ready to sell? Seven days, 30 days, or 60 plus days. Typically, you want to give them some options. You never want them to feel like they're just having this open-ended question that they can't really answer. But if you give them some options, this is another qualifying question to help you understand how motivated they are. All of this leads up to the last question, which is motivation. Typically, if something is more outdated and it needs a lot of work, they're going to be more motivated than somebody who has a newly remodeled property. So moving on from the timeline, if they need to sell in the next seven days, then you know for a fact they can't sell it on the market. They can't list it with a realtor. They need to move pretty quick. Even within the next 30 days, listing it on the market may not be something that they can do. If, and if you get an offer today, you're not going to close until 30 days, if not 30 to 60 days from now. So if these guys need to sell in the next 30 days, then most likely this is going to be a qualified opportunity. Now, if it's 60 plus days, then that's a little different. They probably have time to list it on the market. But typically, if it's 90 days or less, this is something that we can work with and something that we want to pursue. With this question, it's not asking like, oh, what's your asking price? Or what do you want for the property? It's like considering everything we just discussed, the roof needs to be replaced. Um, you're wanting to sell it in the next 30 days. Did you have any ideas about what you think the property might be worth? Another way to phrase this is, do you have any ideas of what you're looking to walk away with on this property? Especially if they need to sell in the next seven to 30 days, they're going to have to walk away with less than what they can get on the market. If they say no, they don't know what the property is worth, pull up Zillow. Okay, let's say, for example, a estimate is $1 million. Throw a number that's like absurd out there and just say, you wouldn't consider something in like the 500, high 500s, would you? And the reason why you say that is you throw it out in the open that they wouldn't consider it. So it's not offensive. Once you say that you wouldn't consider something closer in the 500s, would you? They, they'll either say, no, I would, or they'll say, no way, I at least need 750000 Now you know what their price is. Now you know what they're asking. Typically, you don't want to give like the exact price that you're going to offer on a property. You're just giving a number so that they actually give you a number. This is just a tactic on how to get a number out of them. If you have decided that like this is a property you want to move forward with, keep on moving. Awesome. That, that sounds like a great property and something we might be interested in. Besides the cash offer on the home, why are you looking to sell or at least get an offer? Let them talk. It could be so many different situations like a divorce. It could be a foreclosure. It could be they fell on hard times. They need to escape the country. And then ask about like how long they've been thinking about this. Some questions to dig a little deeper is, I see, how long have you thought about selling? If they are not interested in selling. It's up to us to convince them to sell. Typically, we'll just say, hey, it sounds like you're not that interested in selling, which is totally okay. I'm not here to convince you to sell, but I'm, I might be wrong, but it sounds like you're not very interested in selling. They will do one of two things. So either say, yes, you're right. I'm not interested in selling, or they'll tell you, no, no, I am interested in selling. And again, I would go for no again and just be like, I don't know. It sounds like you might be just be saying that because you want to hear an offer. But where again, I don't really want to work, move forward and send this to the owner unless you're really interested in selling. And you can kind of see like even when I talk and I, I try to like use my face, use my hands, because when you're talking on the phone with these sellers, they can hear if you're just being monotone or if you actually have some tonality in your voice and you're having a genuine conversation with them. But once you go through that script, if the seller is motivated, then you set an appointment to go to the property. So, hey, this sounds like a property we'd be interested in buying. I'd love to come check it out and meet you in person. Would this time or this time be a good time to come check it out? Give them two options. And then next week, we'll talk about what it looks like to actually run the numbers before you go on the, that appointment. Thanks for watching guys. Remember, if you want to be on these videos live, go to the link in the description below to sign up. Aloha y'all. See you on the next video. Shoots.